Hello everybody. I want to share something that might be a nudge for some people that need it and also frightening for others. But people are so focused on being deceived and so worried about being deceived that it's inhibiting their own selves from going to follow Christ and grow their relationship. There's so much time spending on this pastor or that pastor, or this prophet and that false prophet that you are not doing yourself any good with your relationship with Christ to go find out the truth. It's not doing you any good. Standing in the middle and watching somebody debate God one way and somebody debate God another way isn't doing you any good because you're just standing there in the middle. And I, I find it that the a lot, a lot of Christians are worried about who their pastor is or where they go or what they're doing or because you're bypassing your own relationship with Jesus Christ. You got to understand brothers and sisters and people that are lukewarm and people that are maybe just fake and haven't given their life to God that you will be judged by everything that you did in your life, right? God is not going to call you up as your family or your family tree or your group or the church or the, your fellowship or anything as a group. You will be called up and either accepted into his kingdom or cast into the lake of fire for eternity based off of your life, the deeds that you did, and whether or not that your sins have been forgiven and washed away by the blood of the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ, period. People, you are deceived because you want to be deceived. I know that there's the deceiver who will deceive many and all this, but honestly, those are the people that want to be deceived, right? In this day, in 2020, the people that are sitting in a, in a coliseum listening to Joel Osteen, they willfully are being deceived. Everybody knows that Kenneth Copeland or all these preaching is not of Jesus Christ. And you could sit there and say, brother, how, how can you say that? These people are really hungry for God. And I'll sit here and I'll tell you no. No, because Jesus is alive himself and the Holy Spirit will guide them into all truth. So if they were seeking Jesus Christ with their whole heart and they've been going to wherever Joel Osteen or any of these other preachers, not even big prosperity preaching, but just the, the any ones you see on YouTube or anything, all these preaching, you're going to sit there for a year looking for Jesus Christ and you're going to tell me that Jesus Christ hasn't spoke to them? You got to understand so many people want to hide behind their, their pastor so that they, on the day of judgment, can say, Lord Jesus, this man did it. This woman did it. This brother in Christ, they did it. I wanted you. I really, really wanted you, Lord. But this person led me astray. And it will not work for you. So for your own benefit, you have to go straight to Jesus Christ. Right? God is going to say, my son is the bridge. He is the way to me. Nobody comes to me but through him. So you cannot sit there and blame a pastor, a brother, anyone on YouTube, anything. It will not pan out. So stop being afraid and cry out for Jesus. Anybody that wants Jesus Christ, you will not be deceived. So stop being afraid about what church you go to. Or I've heard so many stories about, you know, I was a part of this church for so many years and they led me down and, and the blame gets passed. No, you loved that. And it just didn't work out. That's all. But you loved the things that you did. You loved trunk or treating at your church. You loved the Christmas trees and lights inside your church. You loved Easter egg hunting out back in, in the field with your children. You love all of that. So don't on that day say, I was led down the wrong path. or I Because you weren't seeking Jesus Christ to begin with. Pastors are... And anybody else sharing the gospel with you is never meant to be the middleman between you and Jesus, who is the middleman between that person and God. Everybody, Paul, Peter, James, John, anybody. Nowadays, me, anybody else. Our job is to say, hey, here's the good news of Jesus Christ. Help you get a little bit of edification. And most importantly, 
lead you to Jesus. That is our whole entire job. It is not meant for you to sit around and pick our brains or, or come around and say, oh, what about this and what about this? After a while, we're done. We say, go find out if you want to know because this is turning into a religious sort of thing. Go. Go join a church if that's how you want it to be. Otherwise, go ask Jesus Christ yourself. But people don't believe in that little bit of lack of faith in believing that Jesus Christ actually is real keeps them in this life. It keeps them doing this stuff. It keeps them going to people, Lord, will you pray for me? My grandma's sick right now. Go pray for yourself. Pastor, or, or excuse me, not Lord, but pastor. Uh, pastor, you know, I'm having a, a battle with pornography. I'm having a battle with lust. I'm having a battle, you know, what do you think? Go to Jesus Christ. Have him purify your heart, cleanse you, and live by his standard. And your love for Jesus Christ and your relationship for pleasing him, the fear of God that will come upon you is going to be way more way more than you need to ever get over any of that stuff, period. But people don't want to be rid of that stuff. People don't want to be done with that. You want to be done with alcohol? Go to Jesus Christ and let him take care of that. Alcohol Anonymous, or whatever it's called, that's just a group of people that sit around and talk about woe is me and this is my life and it goes all the way back to their childhood or a marriage or how did we even get here? People just want to play the wang game. Everybody wants excuses in life. Well, let me share with you. Jesus Christ never played that. He never had excuses. No matter if people mocked, slandered, shamed him, ultimately killed him, he knew that he came down to do the Father's will. No matter if it was a good day, a bad day, raining, people believed in him, they didn't believe in him. They call him of the devil or believe that he was Jesus Christ, it didn't change the fact that he already knew he was going to die for your sins. He already knew how much he loved you. So make your mind up, brothers and sisters, or anybody else, unbeliever, make your mind up. Those that want Jesus Christ will find him. Those that want truth will seek it with all their heart, and you will find him who is truth. You want God, you want to go to heaven, you will find Jesus Christ and have a relationship. All who hear his voice are his sheep. Not all who hear a pastor or another brother or sister in Christ or anybody are Jesus' Jesus' sheep. So please, please, for your own soul's sake, go to God. Go to Jesus Christ who will bridge the gap. He is our intercessor. He is the middle person between us and God. Away from Jesus Christ, God is angry with us, absolutely. But he's pleased with Jesus Christ, so we hide in behind Jesus Christ. In our faith in Jesus Christ, in our love for him, and what he did for us on the cross makes us right in God's sight. So go to Jesus and have him be your pastor. Have him be the person who shares the truth with you in what the God, the Father wants and doesn't want and, and what pleases him and displeases him. Go to Jesus to ask how you get rid of pornography or an addiction to whatever you have. Go to Jesus Christ and ask him to heal your grandma. Ask him to know. the. So everybody doesn't have an excuse. You will not have an excuse on that day in judgment. You will not be able to hide behind. He says, I called you to myself and you ignored it. Everybody, 40,000 people sitting there listening to a Joel Osteen sermon on a Sunday will not have an excuse that Joel Osteen led it. Joel Osteen will have an account and he will get cast into hell if he doesn't repent of his ways for the things, for leading those people to hell. But those individual people will not say, oh, at least God punished Joel Osteen. Well, thank you, Lord. I'm getting into heaven. No, you will have your own sins. Why did you allow yourself or your family to follow this false person? Because you loved a lie rather than truth. You loved darkness because your deeds were evil rather than light. And it will not pan out well for you. And it will not be an excuse on that day. Nobody will ever, 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 ever deteriorate relationship with Jesus Christ or be a barrier or anything for you to go to God. 
it is always going to be you. Period. So don't use an excuse. Don't be deceived. Go to Jesus Christ. If somebody shares the gospel with you or teaches you for a month or two, fine. That's great. If you fellowship with them for the rest of your... Absolutely. But they are not your Christ. God has a different will, different powers, different gifts for you. We just say, hey, here's Jesus Christ and blah, 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 blah. Here's how you can hear him. Here's how you can pray. Be baptized in, in water and of the Spirit. Be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. Pray in spirit. And you go to God, right? The way I always explain it to people is I cannot figure out how to light your fire. You have to figure out how to light your fire, right? I know what I have to do on those days where I'm melancholy or I'm not feeling it or I know what I have to do in the prayers and in, in the things that I have to get rid of or do or what not on those days. Okay, I got too much tel you know or not television. I got too much cell phone time. You know, put this down. I got too much Bible time even sometimes. Put this down and go to my bedroom and be alone with him. So I know what God's voice sounds like when he's calling me or pushing me in direction. I can't tell you, nor anyone can tell you what your spirit inside of you wants. That's between you and the Lord. So we could say, go to God, try to spend, but you have to figure out those disciplines. You have to figure out your self-control, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, period. Right? There's a person that can have a glass of wine and be on fire for the Lord. Me, I have to run from it if alcohol comes because I had a problem with it in the past. So it's a relationship thing. It's not straight across the board. I can't go hang around in a bar or anything because I'm not putting myself in a position to be tempted. Another brother or sister in Christ can go into the bar section of Red Robin, not think anything of it, go in and come back out loving and on fire for the Lord. Because the devil is not going to tempt him with that. Because they don't have a problem like he would me if I went into the bar section of Red Robin. And that's just being smart. Does God forgive me? Does God, am I being accused of it? No. Is it washed away my sins for doing that? Absolutely. But I will not allow myself the occasion to be put in a position to go and be tempted. I'll just stay away. So... You have to know, between you and Jesus Christ, what works. His voice, know His voice. So that way you're not deceived. Because no excuse is going to work on that day of judgment. The world might be getting scary now, but remember, we're so much closer to that wedding, that banquet, that feast. Jesus Christ getting all His glory that has been coming to Him. We sit around, we talked for years about how Jesus is coming back for his bride, the church. So now the world's going to get scary and persecution will come for all of us. But remember that. It's supposed to be like this. If we're supposed to lay up our treasures in heaven because where our treasures are, our heart will be also. We're just getting closer to that time to go be able to be with God the Father and those treasures that we've been storing up. It's going to be scary here. We're going to be entering territory that the world has never seen before. But hang in there. It's supposed to be like this. But everybody get over that hump and go for Jesus Christ. He is the one that died for your sins. He is the mouth of God. He's the one that will guide you into all truth. And you have to know him. Knowing your pastor or knowing a brother and sister that led you to Christ is not your entry into heaven. It's if you know Jesus and Jesus knows you. And if your name is found in the book of life, not the church service book. I'm praying for every one of you and please pray for me. In Jesus name, God bless you.